and as a code and it's okay. okay, we're reconvening the old meeting of the council. And do you have any conflicts of interest? No conflicts of interest, any apologies? No apologies, we've got nobody in public forum. In late items, uh, I will move that we consider in late items the uh, item which has support for the petition calling for citizens initiated referendum on state highway maintenance. So I'll move that. Somebody second, so you can count for home. So we'll bail if we say aye. We'll give you time to have a quick read of that when we get to it. Okay, we now move to page five, which is confirmation of the minutes. The council meeting held on June 28, 2023. Could I have a mover? Move Councillor Johnson, seconded Councillor Lennox. Any discussion? No discussion. I'll put the motion on the paper, please say aye. Aye. Again, thank you. Page 26 uh, is approval of the 2023-24 work program for the Wairatha Economic Development Strategy. And Matt, I think you're going to do that. Oh, yeah, they come down. Okay, Matt, we're on to the YRAP Economic Development Strategy. As you're going to provide the report and, uh, and then by uh, the <laughs> Yes, so um, provide you with the report on the work program for YRAP Economic Development Strategy for approval for this year. Um, I did a bit of a cover report to six out context of the weeds and the processes we've gone through, but we do want to say by well, Stu Taylor, um, who's the GM of Business and Innovation at OCNZ. Matt Carrera, who's a economic development team lead, and then Jacinda Johnston, who is the program manager for WES. So they authored the report that sits behind it. So it would probably be best if they come up and present that report. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They can come up if you like. Um, and okay, I'll well, let you present your report, whoever's doing the lead. Thank you. Kia ora tato, call to the table of Um I'm the GM of Business and Innovation at Wellington NZ. As uh, Matt said, and we've got Matt and Jacinda here. Sure. Um, part of the team. Thank you for having us. Uh, number one, so we're here to seek for approval to the WEDS work program and budget for this year. Um, and as a recap, the purpose of the WEDS strategy is to create a thriving war wrapper for all. It's governed by the WEDS Forum, which includes the CE of the councils, three Wairapa councils, the mayors, um, business representatives, Destination Wairapa, uh, Joe Hay from Lagitani, um, and I think Ra Smith from uh, Kathy Nini, Kathy Mason, sorry. Um, the late replacement. Uh, yes. And shared by Adrian Young Cooper. So we basically recap on the uh, position of the WEDS. Uh, the WEDS strategy was approved at Mont last year, and then we had an election, and we took two steps back to go one step forward. So we basically reviewed the priorities with the WEDS forum, came and talked to you guys here. Um, so thank you for your feedback that's been built into the the strategy as it's presented to you today. And then in April, um, we had those workshops across the three wire wrapping councils, back to the WEDS Forum, then to the combined councils. And then we are now seeking individual approval from, the, from each of the councils here. So Carlton approved the work program last month, uh, and we're on the agenda with South Wire Wrapper uh, later this month. So there's some big focus areas for the Wairapa, so business, workforce, EV development, land, water. Um, so it's quite a varied and broad work program. One of the key uh, challenges is the modest budget to implement the work program. So it's very much a leverage model where we use the funding available to unlock other funding, such as central government. So having a a plan with the Green Parties helps us pitch the message to central government, which hopefully unlocks Kano funding, funding from NPI and elsewhere. Um, and 
basically for the investment of $100,000 from Masterton District Council. Last year, we turned that into $600,000 worth of work across the wire wrapper. So you've got a copy of the plan. We'll take it as read. So we're here to answer any questions. Anything else you want Thank to add? Thank you very much. Anything you want to say, Matt or Jacinda? Uh, if you're happy with the, the introduction, I'm happy to leave it there and focus on any questions that might help me. Hey, any questions for Street and yeah, Councillor Helena? We thank you guys for sharing your time with us today. Uh, looked at the work program and you can look at the work that's already been done. It looks like being really, really busy. I guess follow um, and, and fully support the vocal. From a council of uh, council law perspective, I, I guess one of the issues for me is, I think you mentioned that Stu, you know, um, it's more of a, a leverage organisation as opposed to getting in there and doing stuff yourself. I guess what you were saying, even though you will be doing some stuff yourself, I'm sure. But um, one of the one of the things that I wonder about is um, how do we how do we know you're being successful? Uh, you're sort of leveraging off other organisations and all those organisations be bringing that success anyway without you. And so um, one of the things you know, I'd like to know in 12 months' time is what's your contribution be to any success measures yeah. that you come up with and, and how you know. Yeah, um, so as part of the MOU, we will be doing a annual report on the progress and the outcomes as well. So it's, I would say the... Uh, establishment phase of getting the plan developed is the first part, and then doing the implementation and the outputs that lead to the outcomes is going to be part of the reporting. So we'll definitely be bringing the Wellington NZ team. So we've got the business support um, through the regional business partners network, that kind of thing, um, to the wire app to ramp that up so we can demonstrate results through that. Thank you again. And to, to that point as well, um, we can look at um, what you will have seen in the report uh, with the Q3 report included in the paper. Um, just picking up on a couple of examples, you're exactly right that it is a leverage model and we also drive some of the activity ourselves, primarily through Jacinda and some of um, Natasha's um, time as well. Um, your, your question around would it have happened regardless is, is really important. Um, and I can take a couple of examples there. Uh, one is the digital boost program that um, MB funded last year across the country to run cohorts to tra train small businesses with digital skills. Um, we immediately had three applications that ended up being successful from the Warada because just in the literally when door knocking found the organizations that would deliver it and enable the program to be delivered here locally. I don't believe that would have happened organically without that. Um, the Dark Skies is another example that, that's been on the card book. The accreditation is relatively recent, um, but in terms of an economic development opportunity, it's been on the cards for a while. Destination water is delivering, delivering it, and so should they, of course. Um, but the fact that the WITS exists to elevate some of the priorities at Wadalapa Hawaii, therefore, brings that focus and that seed funding enables us to go and seek other sources of funding to reinforce what has been elevated as priorities. So I do feel that um, having the WETS as a focus and a team to drive it is creating an impact. Yeah, Councillor Trust, I just want to ask the councillors to stand, please. It's been a long day and now it's fine. Hi. Yeah. Great to see you all. Um, I noticed in your presentation there's a bit about leveraging dark skies opportunity, and I just wanted to bring to your attention that Council has recently confirmed that we are going to go through that process to um, achieve dark skies accreditation. And I just wonder whether um, we know that, but also to whether we can work with you and sort of leverage the opportunity together and become part of your Dark, dark Skies project plan. Because obviously the opportunity will be greater if Bastion's a part of it as yeah. well. Yeah, I'm drinking to that. Yeah, so yes, absolutely. And hopefully that's already happening. Um, so 
The Dark Skies is a wet initiative driven by Destination Guadalapa, obviously, because of the tourism focus. And through um, some seed funding from WEDS, um, we've enabled Destination Guadalapa to have a resource that is literally putting the program plan together now. And very much aware of the fact that Masterton has approved um, some support towards accreditation, which is wonderful. Chris is um, the person who's driving this uh, Destination Guadalapa. Her work right now is to pull together the detailed program plan. And it should very much include that element that has done wanting to become part of the reserve the habitation as well. And that will come um, to the forum at the next meeting, which is on the 24th of March. Is there any main point of contact from the council that Chrissy can work with? Could I perhaps ask Matt, because Matt has been a uh, master lead advisor on the Masterton aspect of the work. We've got it in the CE report um, a little bit later on, but I think it's opportune to have a discussion about it now. Yeah, so um, the process to get accreditation from Masterton, um, which we've just heard back from the International Dark Sky Agency today, um, they're going to come back and tell us about what we need to do. Um, and Christy is on the project team that we've pulled together. To, um, alongside alongside the Warren the Dark Skies Association to keep this all moved together so that everyone's left to and moved to together. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Goodman. Uh, just to add up, please. Oh, sorry. Um, when you're um, I'm conscious that uh, this is just for this account here, you're asking for that funding, and we've got the LTP uh, process learning. So when do you next report on your performance, which will inform us of that LTP discussion? So I could take that. So we'll be coming to you at the next combined council meeting at the end of the month for a progress report, which will include our full annual report and financials the last 12 months. Um, we'll be visiting every combined council meeting every quarter. Um, in the WEDS forum, we've already scheduled an LTP discussion for November, and then we'll be very active about making submissions, visiting bodies, and feeding those priorities, not just into the LTP, because we need that reflected across all three districts, but also into the uh, renewal of the entire WEDS government structure and budget, which comes up in alignment with that LTP process as well. Okay. Councillor Nelson. Um, on page two of your report, page 31 of ours, got the breakdown of the cost costings. So then you report back your year, how that money is going to spend and what it's going to be on. Just, I've got one question regarding the digital infrastructure stock tank. There's no information in this report about that. There is about other things you know about that. Well, what does that mean? What's the detail? And what would that process look like? If you watch to hear that now. So the digital infrastructure stock take was one of the elements um, that was identified um, by the consultant in Hutchins and was engaged by Marston in 2019 on behalf of the three councils. Um, that was quite a chunky 120-page report of recommendations, um, all of which were accepted at the time. And then what we did was we looked at the budget and resources available, and we brought that down to, I guess, a narrow focus of those five areas that were brought to the beginning. Um, so our intention there is to bring it to the Leeds Forum on the 24th of August and talk about money allocation available, the potential uses for that, and then get, um, I guess, strategic governance and leadership direction of which one of those avenues they would like us to prioritise using the money. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Ra? Sorry. Um, I, your opening statement had... Uh, something about um, $100,000 from last year. Um, but then your reference in terms of return on investment was for the whole of the province. Is that because you don't have a breakdown for what's been spent in last in itself? So you started with the contribution that Marston gave, but then when you talked about the return on investment, yeah. That was sort of wild, wild Do you have any breakdowns for what that what seems in must? Um, not specifically to master terms. So the whole purpose of the WEDS forum is to um, collectivize and collaborate across the whole of the wire effort. So it's a pooling resources. So in Wellington, it's two hundred fifty thousand 
in for people and the council clicks in project costs. So we treat that sort of roughly five hundred thousand dollars as the the enabling work to make projects happen with people. So just if there's one of the team with uh, Natasha as well. So we don't drill down into specific districts. And I say you might see that in terms of uh, the money that we're spending here, that we're thinking as a return on investment for the area that we're, that we're yeah, associated. So then we're thinking, well, actually, if you want us to be supporting that, then some record about that um, would actually think about how we spend our money. Uh, we're about to spend ratepayers' money, and uh, we want to know that the return on investment is something. And so I was thinking that if you were um, uh, reporting back to your investors, that that might be a part of your reporting. And we are looking at um, when initiatives come to the table at the forum for discussion, whether the initiative is specific to a part of the Wadarapa or across the breadth of the Wadarapa. Um, most of them are across the whole of the Wadarapa. So I gave a couple of examples earlier. Um, the digital boost, for example, we had three reports in the Wadarapa. Um, they did with partnerships, and if I'm right, one of them was with the business what about also general commerce, I'm assuming that would have been the investors in. Uh, they were delivered across the three districts. Across as well, so roaming. So we, the Rebel Business Tool, for example, was an event um, for uh, people wanting to develop their business ideas, and that was for anyone from the what about to join into. Um, so, so, so you don't want to report back about the return on investment about our investment into your into your process. And, um, that's a pretty simple question because we have to report back to our um, rate plans about what we spend. And if they see all of that going somewhere else, then oh, so all, 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 we're, all, we're asking, all I'm asking for is an understanding about the return on investment in terms of the $100,000 given to Potentially a good way of explaining that would be the three Warrior Council's approach to well and NZ looking for support to deliver a model with a wire by needs. And then part of the consultation that we did um, under the words research, um, the things that we heard back very strongly were that um, people wanted policy with a wire for wide vision rather than a district level vision. Um, and so the model that was discussed and to be fair that was by the previous term um, adopted it was a hybrid governance model involving GWRC. You could see that we have a responsibility to the people in our district to understand what the uh, their rates are being spent on in terms of the return on investment. You're a group that's promising return on investment, like you started with uh, the opening of that. You had a hundred thousand dollars from here, and then you had six hundred thousand. But what I'm saying is that there's uh, a, a part that we want to understand because. When I go back and see other people in the community and they say, what's this been spent on? I would love to recall back to them that in, as a district group, that is that this is what's happening. Yeah. Okay, we've now got uh, Councillor Goodwin, then Councillor Thompson. Yeah, the um, sort of story I I would like to learn more about is, um, for instance, the Wainawa. Uh, industrial park water spend. Um, there was quite a few people involved in that, and I'd like to know what your part was. I, I probably a bit like that. I'm not, but initially I see uh, whatever it is, 1.7 million or something. And it sounds good, but I need to, uh, for me, I need to hear what you did, did there because. I get a little concerned where we have a master than economic um, strategy. And then we have a wire and apple one. And we have a regional leaders group. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I wonder about the cost of them and the benefits. Yeah, that's a that's a good example of a economic development initiative that fits the 
criteria of the Kanoa Regional Strategic Partnerships Fund. So in terms of AROC just simply played a big part in that, in terms of um, bringing JNL to the table in the first place to the WEDS Forum, but realising that central government wouldn't fund a specific business on its own without looking at that wider local level of a much wider strategic piece of work to basically improve the resilience, productivity, um, and generate more opportunities for businesses in the local area, as well as the potable water. So just in this work, pulling that together with central government, with the businesses, with Carterton, and I think your previous CE was um, instrumental in putting an application together that's going through the process as we speak to get funding to help that project actually happen. Without just into that, it wouldn't happen, if I'm perfectly honest with you, because there's no one driving. Councillor okay, Johnson? My question was actually really who paid the grant to come up with the fund, because it did say that you are hoping to hear in July. Do you think the yes, I can give you the specific update on that? Right. Um, so can I have uh, two streams, one for sort of um, capital and equity loans and one for grants? Because grants are so rare, there's quite a number of hoops to jump through. It's approximately 12. Uh, we just jumped through the 11th hoop, which was Crown Holdings reviewed it um, with an initial ministerial team and gave it a stamp of approval. That means it now goes and sits on the new ministerial committee for Kanoa, which is the, the very last one of the selection term in this fund and of which our uh, new minister has just been appointed to. So that's the very last batch um, for the Regional Strategic Partnerships Fund to give us. So I would hope that in the very last week of August, we will have a firm yes or no, and that is sort of out of our hands now, and we'll go to debate at that level, and hopefully we have a really good advocate on our side now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good, good, good questions. No further questions, we'll move to the recommendation. Sure. Uh, uh, and there are four recommendations there that we received the letter of endorsement from the forum chair. We approved the work program as per the attached work plan. We note that the WEEDS MOU and budget will be reviewed as part of the 2024 long term plan. And we note that progress on the 2023 24 work program will be reported to the WEEDS forum. So, if somebody moved in to move those recommendations, moved by uh, Chapter 30, seconded by Councillor Helena. Any further discussion? Put the motion all in favour, please say aye. Aye. Again, thank you very much, folks. We now move to page 50, which is the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee Future Development Strategy and Update to the Terms of Reference. And Daniel, perhaps it'll be the subject. Kia ora, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, Council has been a member of the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee since February 21. The committee is a joint committee of councils across the Wellington region. It also has representatives from Iwi and from um, Central Government Crown representation. Um, it leads a program of work that is Wellington Regional sort of focused. Um, it started off one of the key projects was the Wellington Regional Growth Framework so there's terms of reference that apply to the committee that we're actually bringing here today for council to consider an amendment. Um, that amendment is being sought as over the last 12 months, the committee has led a program of work called the Future Development Strategy, which you have had some workshops on and some updates on along the way. Um, at the moment, the way the terms of reference are structured, they enable that committee to make decisions to progress work on the regional growth framework, which is the predecessor to the future development strategy, but it doesn't actually allow that committee to move forward with the um, future development uh, committee it's, uh, future development strategy itself. Um, so that program of work is getting to a point where it needs to be adopted for consultation, and then we will run through the consultation process um, with our communities and it will come back for decision. So today what we're seeking is an amendment to the terms of reference, which would enable the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee to actually adopt their draft strategy for consultation and to um, manage the hearings process for that. We're also seeking for a member of our council, an elected member to be appointed to that committee so that they would take part and represent our council as part of the hearings. Um, 
Other options for sort of moving this forward were considered. Um, some of the key, I guess, recommend that well, advantages of this particular option is A, efficiencies. The future just development strategy will help inform LTPs across the region. So ideally, we want that to be moving forward a bit faster. Um, it also enables EWI representatives that are part of that leadership committee to be at the decision making table. So um, those are probably the two key drivers. Um, our member is the mayor on that committee, and the alternative is our deputy mayor. Um, and it's got to go through all council across the region. So Hutt City have already considered it, and they have agreed to the change. South Wairarapa considered it this morning, and they have also agreed to the change. So it's really being brought to our council now to consider whether you will um, approve those changes and enable that process to proceed. Kim from the committee is here and is able to answer any questions if you have specific questions around the process or anything to do with that. Kim, would you like to say anything for start? Um, just one thing I would say. So the recommendation about appointing an elected member. So at the moment, plan A is that um, on the 19th of September, the leadership committee will get the draft agreement, uh, the draft future development strategy to sign off for engagement. Um, and at that same meeting, appoint the hearings subcommittee, subject to all the rest of the councils agreeing to these changes. Um, so having a name today, or at least some early phase, would be beneficial because then all those people can be appointed at, at the 19th of September. Thank you. All right, any questions? Councillor Helena, just for clarity, I did read this I promise, um, pretty late last night. So, so we're wanting the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee to have the authority of sign off the future development strategy. Is that what we're doing today? I can meet a subcommittee. I can meet a subcommittee to do that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Goodwin. Just, can you just remind me uh, what the budget is? What, what are we put into this organisation? How much do we? Oh, sorry, I don't get it. How much do you spend? Oh, yeah, please, if you could, if you could just all speak up. It's like, uh, yeah, it's it's not good. We're not hearing too much down this end. I'm not sure if David Harris has got those numbers to hand. He's shaking his head. But no, this was um, this was approved probably a couple of years ago. Now, wasn't it, Kim? Around how much money went into the future development strategy. Uh, so it has been part of our budget. So it's been and gone, and probably all spent and all spent. Um, on it so far. You want me to stand too? I should have asked. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there's two bits of money. So the secretariat, which is all our salaries, the um, independent chair, and the EB members on the committee, is funded by a uh, mostly funded by a GW rate. Some money from Horror Benoa, because it was in the region, and some money from the Ministry of Health and Urban Development. So your council doesn't fund that as such, but obviously your rate pays do. Um, and then there are a number of regional projects, such as the future development strategy, the housing business investment, the climate change ones. So again, I don't know the amount, but you pay that on the same basis that you pay the Remo fee, which is based on a population basis. We can find it for you, though. Yeah, yeah. Any further questions? No further questions. I'll come to the recommendations. Now, I'll have the recommendations and I'm back. Oh, number nine, we the one linked to the member councillor. I have asked Councillor Goodwin if he will do that job. He's accepted. So um, if you could just put in there that it would be Councillor Goodwin. So the recommendations are on page 50 and 51. I won't read them all. Somebody prepared to move. Move Councillor Bay, seconded Councillor Tuka. Any further discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Right. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. Okay, we move on to page 100. The initial system for the 2025 global government election. I think Tony will do that as well. Um, so, yeah, so as the report outlines, Council has the opportunity um, in the lead up to the next election to consider the electoral system that we use for the 225 um, local government election. So there's two um, options that are outlined in the paper that um, councils around the country have one or the other. At the moment, we have the Post, which is the current system we've used 
um, for as long as I can recall that in our elections. Um, essentially, that is where people will vote and the persons or persons that are the elected members that, sorry, candidates that get the most votes become the elect, uh, elected members. The alternative system, which is used, um, if you recall our voting forms, you may remember regional council use it and district health board used to as well, is um, called single transferable vote. And that is where you actually rank your candidates in order of preference, so from one, two, three. Um, and then in the background, when the voting is processed, what they do is there's a quota um, for the first appointed person. And when the quota is reached, votes then get transferred to the next person until that quota is reached and the next person and um, so on. So it's just slightly different way of doing it. Um, there are pros and cons for both systems and they are outlined in the report. Council um, at the moment, um, if council chooses not to make a decision, then we remain in the status quo, which would be first past the post for us. There is also an option of considering a poll, and then just a reminder, a poll is not consultation. A poll is actually a decision would be made by the community, um, or the community could actually request a poll. We have had some cost estimates of what that would cost, and we've been told in the range of 85 to 90k if we were to run a poll. Um, at, you know, independent of an election process. An alternative might be if council wanted to test it with our community would be to wait to the 25 election and run a poll at that time. The cost of that is estimated at around about 16K. Um, there is also uh, an option for the community. The community could actually request that a poll themselves and we have to publicly notify that they write for the community to request a poll by the 19th of September. So that's just a bit of background context. The decision that we need from you today really is whether you want to maintain first past the post, whether you want to um, consider moving to single transferable vote and whether council has any um, appetite to consider a poll um, at the present time. Questions? Councillor Lynx and Councillor Bayer. Thank you, Tanya. So just a query there. So regardless of if we decide status quo or go with a poll, that could all be completely pushed over by the public requesting a poll regardless. Right. Yes, so the public could request a poll. Um, we haven't had that happen in the history that I've been involved in elections, but it could happen. On, on that, just moving on from a council members question, how many people would have to uh, request that we hold this poll? Is it just one person or is it? It's five percent of electors, which I think it's in the report. It's around a thousand. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, I, I was actually wanting to move the recommendation and agree to a. Uh, we're just on questions at the moment, Paul. Any uh, Councillor Lynn? Jamie, could you just go over the costs of running that poll again? Uh, 85,000, I think we do it sort of in the current period, but was it 16,000 from wait till 2025 election? Yeah. Why the difference? Um, it's, yeah, but so uh, Warwick Lamp is our tool officer from elections.com, and so if we were to run a poll now, that would have to be run as an independent process in its own right. And so that would be looking at a cost of roughly 85 to 90k. If we were to do it as an add on to the elections, because there's, we're already going out to seek the views of people and there's costs with the elections, it could be an add to the election, and therefore it would be more like an extra 16k, is what he's estimated at this point. Thank you. Questions? No further questions. We then come to the recommendation. Councillor Johnson. Yes, I'd like to move the recommendation and agree on two to option A, which is continue with the status quo, first past the post electoral system. So it's number one, receive the report. Number two, continue with the status quo. And number three, notice the community. Got any notified of which one to pop. Yep, thank you. Got a second? Councillor Holmes. Right, any further discussions? Councillor Nelson. I you know, just support your recommendation just on the basis of it's fairly confusing. I read the mass work, I was confused after reading but still out there having explained to it the mass um, to me. And I think voters get exactly what they're asking for. They know what they're asking for. And um, and I think with the 
voting being slow though anyway, I think this could potentially make it even more. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Elena. Yeah, I, I still, I'm on of the contrary view. Um, I always always think um, community getting what they want is the most important thing in any election. And what I understand this process is it's far more representative of community perspective um, and, if, uh, and, and, and potentially far more representative of minority groups. And they talk about um, how it's, in certain spaces it's contributed to females being elected, whereas first past the post they might have completely missed out. So um, I'm not keen to spend 85000 on it ourselves and drive it, but I'd really like us to look at it for 2025. Uh, along with the education program for our community, because I think uh, the, the, the single most compelling factor is that it's more representative of what the voters want in terms of who represents them. Thank you, Councillor Lennas. Now, Councillor Goodwin. I suppose I freely admit I don't, uh, it took some years to learn the intricacies of the current system. And there's many subtleties to it. And this system, uh, I don't fully understand. But um, I'm aware that, uh, from my point of view, one of the biggest challenges is for councillors, elected councillors, to govern. And it's very, if they can't form a majority consensus, or there's the staff going the place. And that I see as one of the great challenges. And I'm not sure that being too diverse, but I don't know, um, necessarily makes it very easy to find those consensus points where councillors exert and make a decision. But Thank you, Councillor. Just stop. Any further questions? Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Nelson and Councillor Lena. Just around um, the diversity and the um, election of minorities. Is that based on one piece of research? I'm just trying to find it out, or a whole lot of research? Because one piece of research can easily come up with one perspective, whereas um, better research will come up with far more accurate picture. Uh, my understanding is there's been a range of research undertaken. Is that correct, Harriet? On the front screen, um, we rely on the uh, um, advice that they put to the guidance for local government. Um, uh, the writer of that report is a professor at Otago University, and she draws a number of different sources. My understanding. Any further questions? Okay, Selena, so you um, oh, sorry, oh, no, no, um, I support um, transfer to do this um, point of view, and I think it would be great um, if we um, members the community in the 2025 elections. John, it would like us to go really again because it cost us even more money. So I support the council. But this is the next election anyway. This is the next election anyway. We're talking about. Uh, okay, any further? Do you want to say more, Tom? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, I think you, even first past the post, you get very, very diverse. Okay, we have a we have a motion, which is that uh, we received the report, we continue with the status quo. We noticed that the topic has been moved by Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor Holmes. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Motion is passed. We now move to uh, page 137, which is the submission policy for approval. And Sophie. Thank you, Your Worship. Can I go, so, um, I'm Sophie, policy advisor. Um, speaking to the submission policy for approval paper on page 137, I'll take the report as read. I just wanted to highlight uh, a few things. Um, the council undertakes consultation, like you've done today with the cycleways, 
um, with our community on a range of topics and decisions. The proposed policy aligns with um, the Local Government Act and our significance and engagement policy, as well as um, a range of other policies listed in the, in the policy document. The real aim of the policy is about providing clarity for both our community and the Council on this mission aspect of the engagement process. Um, and we want to provide greater consistency across um, these processes as well. And this will um, definitely benefit us coming into the LTP. Um, for the most part, the policy outlines what we already do in practice. So there's nothing much that we, we don't already do. It's just about providing that consistency and clarity for our community, um, especially following our recent co consultations. We thought we need to make this clearer for our, ourselves and for our community. Um, and subject to your approval, the policy will be published on our website and highlighted when we go out to consult with our community. So it'll be part of our our communications out to be so thank you thank you so any questions for sophie i'll just stay standing so my uh, concern with this is the difference of a link um there are already questions around uh, consultation and its effectiveness um uh, look at the consultation processes I've been involved in. I suppose that uh, what did we have today on a um, on a cycleway that was 180, 187, and if we had this policy uh, worked up, I'll, I'll guess and say that look, you could even get you know. Seven or eight or ten percent of them to be helped by us having this policy, and I don't see that as being terribly productive. I would like a conversation about um, uh, the way we do do it in terms of brief addresses and essentially so much blanked out, um, and which. Formerly wasn't, but maybe I'm living in the past. But yeah, I, I just question the need for staff to spend whatever time to come up with a policy unless you can, you know, pop one off. South Wairarapa had a, as mentioned, as having a uh, guidance uh, rather than a policy. Um, yeah, maybe we could look at something like that. Just something, something. But we were, but this is saying we've already got, well, this is a policy. Oh. Well, it's not why we're making one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I can respond to Councillor Goodwin. Um, so on the first part of your discussion, the actual extent of the consultation that we carry out with regards to any particular matter um, is governed by our significance and engagement policy. Um, and I'm looking to map the council map usually helps with writing what the actual engagement plan is with our officers um, on what are we going to do and how are we going to do it on a case by case basis. This, as we found the need, as we said in the report, to respond to um, Recent submissions where people have been unhappy with providing their names um, because the climate out there is quite different now, particularly with social media. Um, we need to be able to have people's contact details and names so that we know that they're real people uh, and they're not putting in a lot of different submissions. But we understand that people are concerned, perhaps if they've got contrary views to the majority, um, that they may not want their names out there. Um, so we felt we didn't have guidelines. Call it a policy, we can call it guidelines. Um, it's the same thing. It's information so that our community can understand what happens when we have a submission so we can all be clear on how we trigger a submission. So that's all what we're trying to do here, Councillor. And we have looked at other councils' uh, submissions policies so that we have um, tried to make our process as efficient uh, and uh, productive as possible. Yeah, any further discussion? Any further questions? No further questions. The recommendations are on page mm -hmm. one, three. Oh, sorry, Councillor Lena. I'm just going to pick up on Councillor Goodman's point. I, I think it's really important that we're not doing stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be done. But, but when I read this, I thought it did need to be done. And whoever wrote it, I, I thought it was very clear and concise. And it was a pass on my confidence. Thank you, Councillor Lena. Thank you, Councillor Goodman. Thank you, Councillor Goodman. Thank you, Councillor Goodman. Thank you, Councillor Goodman. Thank you, Councillor Goodman.
Okay, the recommendations are on page one through seven. Tom, I take it that you will move those recommendations. Uh, I've got a seconder. Second it, Councillor Lennox. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Are you, Councillor Nelson? Yeah, Councillor Nelson, I think policies are incredibly important to guide us in what we're doing, and they just provide consistency and certainty to us as councillors and to our community. Thank you, Councillor so the recommendations on page one through seven are moved by Councillor Helena, seconded by Councillor Lennox. Uh, Councillor Lennox, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, we're going now to page one four nine, which is the amendment to the rural advisory group terms of reference. And Matt. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, this is a very short report. Um, seeking. An agreement to amend oh, yes. oh, to, uh, to amend the terms of reference for the Council Rural Advisory Group to add an additional member. Um, originally in um, in May, it was um, the terms of reference were agreed with four community appointees, and um, following discussions with the elected members on the group and um, the mayor, um, we are just seeking to expand that group by one person. That just allows us to bring in a group, bigger range of views to the group bigger range of experience and also brings us more into line with the um, climate advisory group, which has six community members. Thank you. Questions, Councillor Lynch and Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Matt. Um, is there an indication already of who that person is going to be? Is it being predetermined? Uh, so no predetermination yet. We haven't decided on the appointments yet. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Um, Councillor Melina just brought up the message about not doing things we don't have to do, which I um, we've done this because we wanted to go from four to five. Can I just make a suggestion so that we don't have to do this again and perhaps next year go from five to three or from three to four, is that we change it to say up to five community representatives because if we have less interest next year or the year after, we're going to be coming back with this paper at the time. And it does say there we representatives up to two, and I just don't think we've got anything oh, yeah. need to revisit it. Yep. So maybe can I just suggest that change? Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Yeah, no, uh, from from my point of view, just a quick comment is that uh, it was very clear, I think, to the those of us who looked at the uh, nominations for the, the applicants for this that we had five really outstanding people, and it just seemed really. Uh, silly not to accept, not to give the five of them on. And, and uh, they, you, where they are and out, I don't know where they're being, where they are and out, you'll find they really are outstanding people. We're very lucky to have them. So, uh, so that's where I stand and I'm, I'm more than happy with it. So, recommendation uh, is on page 149 and the approved the amendment. I'll take the Douglas Chair of the Committee and we'll move it. Seconded by Councillor Vaya. All those in favour, please. Any further discussion? Can it be with that amendment? Uh, what say we? What say we get two? That are really good. There's no point. We could have six on this committee. Well, well, why change it every year? We, 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 we could just say the next. If we could do the maximum representatives as, as required. We could. We could change it from increasing the number of community representatives from four to five to changing the maximum number of community representatives. Yeah. Okay, so we need to put that in the recommendation. I've got a question. Well, otherwise, we're accepting the terms of reference as they've been presented and not. So we're the, the, what we're doing is when the recommendation is that we're increasing the number of community representatives from four to five for this year. For four to a maximum of five. From four to a maximum of five. And you don't have to change it every year. Yeah, and then that enables us to change okay. in terms of reference to say up to five, and we okay. and we will make that ancillary change. Okay. That's so that also a maximum question. Yeah. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Is there a financial element to this as well? Increasing it to five, yeah. up to five. Is it, yeah. Is it but they get a very small amount. They get very small. The rural people are very. <laughs> so the recommendation has been moved by Councillor Holmes, seconded by Councillor Bowie. All in favour? Okay. Against. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> right. Page five seven. Progressing the establishment of the youth hub for the skate park, and that's Coral. 
After and councillors, your worship. Um, yeah, so this paper is to progress the establishment of, of Youth Hub and seek your approval to use both the uh, pre grant from the Library Learning Centre to do that. Um, just uh, to refresh people's memories, um, so the Youth Hub's been in development for several years. Uh, and as part of that, um, the DIA and Ministry of Youth Development contributed $120,000 um, to, to the project. Um, we have re-engaged with them recently just to confirm that that, uh, that, that money is still fine and, 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 and play as part of the project um, after the, uh, the loss with Podula uh, and liquidation. So we've confirmed uh, that that money is still there and available and as, as part of our, our budget. Um, so yes, Podula went into liquidation uh, in 2022 and um, Council um, suffered, a lot, suffered a loss of 260,000 as part of that liquidation. Uh, we've continued to be engaged as a party uh, to the liquidation, but it's pretty clear uh, that we're unlikely to receive anything back from the liquidation and uh, there is no building that was in progress, so there's nothing for us uh, in terms of the physical item to, to get back either. Um, so um, officers have been looking at uh, different options for how we can deliver the project um, to the existing budget or, or very close to it, and we're recommending the repurposing of one of the library learning centre buildings as the most efficient way of doing this. We, we've looked at um, options like uh, moving a, a rural hall, uh, as well as uh, builds that, that are done by um, organisations like UCOL, and also uh, repurposing of containers, which was part of the original um, idea when this came first came to being in, in 2019. Um, we've also, as part of looking at this, met with uh, recently with a group, in fact, last week with a group um, comprising architects, builders, and, and other tradespeople to, to, to basically uh, gain their interest and support and in working with council to actually try and achieve this project and, and bring it across the line. Um, that was a very productive meeting, um, and we've got a good indication from them that they're willing to work with council to help um, deliver this, uh, and that's through. Um, uh, potentially um, donating resources, so that might be materials, it might be um, labour, uh, and it might be sharpening pencil uh, if there are if there are contracts. So um, we've got a good community feel about doing it, and there was definitely in the meeting a really good uh, engagement around the fact that this was being delivered for our youth in Rangatai, um, and, and and keen to work with us to deliver that. Um, one. Thing alongside that, we will need to um, deliver a, a toilet uh, or toilets as part of this. That will be part of the consent because the um, the youth hub itself has meeting rooms in it, and that comes with considerations. So we're um, looking at a uh, a separate physical structure for that because if we try and put that into the actual physical building, that will reduce the space too much. So we're just pulling together um, the understanding about how we'll bring all those pieces together. Um, as as part of the a part of the project, uh, and subject to today's decision, um, we will uh, meet with that group again tomorrow, uh, and look at the site down at, at the um, the park, and also um, the building itself to to further the understanding of how we might might go about that. Thank you. Can any questions for Cora? Councillor Nelson. It's a current just a few things. Um, I guess the fact the pre fab was put there in the first place meant it was something that was necessary to the library. Mm -hmm. And because the new library or any modifications to the existing library are some time away, what sort of weight's been placed into comparing the loss of that building to what's going to be at the youth hub facility? Yep. So um, so I've talked with um, Tiffany, the library manager, about that, both in terms of like current usage, um, whether we feel in the in the short term we can absorb that in, into the library over the next you know year or two years, cognizant of the fact that we've got this other discussion going on around the future of the library. Um, and the fact that um, that space down at the at the park, because it'll have a meeting room in it, can be used for some of the things potentially that we're doing at the, the library. So we're we're confident that um, the the trade-off is a trade-off worth worth making in that calculation that we will be having a conversation around using that space um, most likely 
um, and, and some form of future loading of council tonight's to go that way. Just to follow up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a comment that you just made. So, just around cost effectiveness, moving this building from where it is to where it's going, going to be going, which always seems to cost a lot more than I ever think it will, mm -hmm. and then not being a fit for purpose building over there with having to make modifications to it, and then building the toilet yep. as well. Well, that is that going to be significantly more expensive than if you weigh it all up, just leaving the prefab where it is and then building another facility altogether? Like, has there been an analysis of those different options? Yes, yeah, one last question. So we've, so we've looked at those and uh, uh, what um, our, um, so yeah, we haven't QS to, to the, like you would do with a, like a fully scoped building project, but when we've looked at, uh, so like a rural hall, so if rural hall of this, we have to do the move. The rural hall will take a lot more to move in terms of cost. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, the, the look and feel of a rural hall, it's probably not quite right for a youth facility, right? It, it's, it's not going to reflect on that. Um, when we look at new builds, uh, new builds get very expensive very quickly because we're establishing. So we're confident that this is the most cost effective way of doing it. Um, container fit out uh, could come close ish, but there are often hidden issues with containers because they're not built to be buildings in the first place. So there's a lot of retrofitting because with the prefab, it's an already built building, which is insulated. It's designed to do exactly what we're going to use it for. Uh, it's got a, it's already got a heat source in it as well. Um, we would be looking at uh, mainly in, but be internal fit out walls to establish a meeting room from a kitchen area. So uh, it will be more cost effective than the other solutions. So I just feel that it would be better for us to have all these costings in front of us before we made a decision, because we don't, as you just said, quite a few things like. Mm -hmm modifications to the building. So we really don't know what we're backing here. I feel like we should have more certainty around the full costs. And there is also the net loss of you losing that building over at the library. And I'm just assuming it would have been for what Tiffany said it was a loss that must have been well used. So I, I just feel we should have the cost analysis of doing, you know, putting the container there or something like that. Here to all this, which also means losing lose the facility somewhere else. Uh, Is the building that you're going to move, was that used for the archives? Is that right? So we used it temporarily as the archive, yes. When we had to vacate the previous building because of earthquake issues. Um, so they were put in there as prefabs to be used for meeting spaces. Uh, within 12 months of the buildings being opened because we had to close the archive, we had to temporarily repurpose. Uh, so the building we're talking about is the one that this, the staff were were in with and acted as the um, the reading room for the archive. So it is that longer one, the bigger one. Uh, but yeah, it is that space. That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if I've missed something, but I have no idea what this building's been to uh, be doing, if, uh, what its function is, and you know, is it, yeah, no idea whatsoever, but please comment on this, this to an agenda. Um, the, I do worry that the suitability of those portable buildings from the library to be down there. Um, uh, that might be wrong. I thought the container is pretty bulletproof. Um, the um, uh, a separate building for the toilet. Uh, I have just worked it out the number of you know toilets in a very small area down there is huge. If you look at the number of public toilets within a, a radius of uh, Hundred and fifty meters from the public ones up, and I, I do struggle with that. But but most uh, the most important thing at this stage, I mean, um, there's uh, not uh, you know, it was very good there. You know, that portacon cost uh, about two hundred and fifty grand. 
to put with from Greenway. Um, so let's you know follow on it. But most importantly, if you can tell me what you want to do in this building. Um, so to the first point, Councillor, there has been previous paper which you've actually considered, which was about supporting the Youth Hub project moving forward, um, which was considered by this council probably a couple of months ago now. Um, so that had a lot of information about it. So the Youth Hub uh, uh, is a project which um, started uh, back in 2019. The concept is basically to have a space for our rangatahi and youth that um, uh, is is theirs to use um, as a meeting room with a small um, cafe uh, facility in it, so not food prep, but uh, pre, uh, pre-made food, etc. Um, it will also serve as a, as a, as a base place for the, the kaitiakis who have been down at the, um, the park area and part of the rationale for delivering it, part of the reason for the funding from um, DIA and the Ministry of Youth was to do with supporting youth mental health. So it will also be used as a space where um, uh, either potentially like the Ministry of Health or other agencies who work with youth can um, use that space to work with youth in an area which um, they feel reflects them and, and they feel comfortable in. So, Right from the start, the Youth Council has been heavily involved in actually helping to think about the space, what it does, um, uh, and and what it might be into the future. I, I know you I remember the discussion, but I don't recall anything like uh, decisions. I mean, one of the first things I'd like to know is what's the uh, is there any operational cost accountable for this, or you know, or, or what? Do they pay rent? Uh, who's they? Well, the, to put this building there and operate it, operate its toilet, its heating, and so it's the standard. Is it going to be a cost to this county, an ongoing cost, or is there some alternative? What what, what are the funding instruments they've looked at? Have they tried trust house? I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think, um, as far as I know. Uh, alternative funding sources have been sourced. Um, so um, I think so. The day councillor is is you. It's the council. The council has decided to do this project. Um, that was a decision that was made previously, um, previous council, but this organisation. So um, the um, yes, any building that we establish comes with operational costs, including um, the power. Uh, Cleaning, those sorts of things. Yes, that is that is part of the overall of this project. Well, Captain, for me, I'd like to see an estimate of that, um, you know, of what the cost. I love them. I don't know, you know, um, the sort of paying staff there or anything. I, I, I just don't know. I remember the discussion we had that they were really nervous and nothing to do Councillor, are you suggesting that we revisit the scope of the project to not have this part of uh, this view park as part of the skate park project? Oh, I suppose I'm just suggesting that you write down what you think the scope of the project is, and what I seem to be grappling with. Um, so I can see it before I make any decision. Yes, for that. Okay. I was going to get this moving along and actually um, move the recommendation that we proceed with the prefab building based on the fact that this project's been going on for so long. The community of the youth that I associate with, the community of parents that I associate with, that are down at the skate park and um, that are wanting this facility, secondly, to remind you all that this also is not just for the skate park or the skate park users. We need to remember that this building is for the Rangatahi of Masterton and further afield. It's not just for the skate park users. You need to make that very clear. And it's been over a year that I've heard discussions around this. And there's people really waiting in the wings to get this underway and to utilise the space. And to you, Mr Goodwin, Councillor Goodwin, we're just speaking about a building right now. What's going to happen in there? There's lots of planning and stuff happening in the background. It's a very community focused outside of council. Um, 
um, project, I suppose you could say. But the fact that we have nothing there means we can't actually do anything, and it's so frustrating. So, you know, I've got the Kaiti out who's down there now doing a huge amount of work, but for the skate park users, but there's other youth agencies that want to get in there and utilise the space for the well-being of our youth. So let's just get the bloody building down there and how we look at utilising it properly, we can discuss later. So I would like to... Well, I'll second one, just to fill up the question. I'll second that. Councillor Bayer. Thank you for your call. Uh, I, I note on here that uh, Councillor approves a budget of 538,570 with burnt 160 of that. Uh, so you can expressly guarantee to the councillors here that this will come in on budget and you won't be coming back for more money or funding. Um, I can't expressly guarantee that to you, Councillor, but what I can expressly guarantee you is that we are working extremely hard to bring this project in within that budget. And if there was any contribution by that, we would come back to Council and discuss that uh, and seek approval. We would not uh, commit Council to anything without Council's approval. But the work that the team are doing and part of the reason that we're recommending the, the move of the, the library building uh, and the engagement with the local tradies, etc., expressly to do that, to, to bring this in um, at the budget or so close to the budget that it's not funny. Um, we've, it's, it's, a, um, it's a challenge in this environment um, to deliver something like this uh, for around the $300,000 mark, but um, everything that we've done to date, the engagement that we've had, um, we think we can, we can get there or very close. As I say, we would come back to this council if there was any uh, question or conversation around the fact that um, it wasn't going to be quite 300,000, and we'd do that before we committed. Thank you. Just yeah, yeah. Um, so I think in the part of this and the way that you are engaging with other contracts and that could be helpful for learnings for us going forward. You know, wanting to deal with contracts and get better value for money for a lot of what we do around the capital. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Bayer. Councillor Hibbs. I would assume that the cost of this uh, building would be no different to what was proposed when we were going to put the original component in there. You know, I might suggest too that in a few months' time or years' time, we might get another two containers that can go there with it. We can save money. Okay, uh, Councillor Lennox, you are you prepared to read the recommendations? Hello. Hello. Oh, it's point five seven. Oh, sorry, point five. Go for it. I do have a question at the end of this, but um, my understanding from the last meeting, uh, Manager Ames was um, you'll give out this to get options, and, and, and you've done that. Uh, so I just want to compliment you for the various options that you've supported, including the, the uh, working with. Um, Business people who, who might might uh, donate time, material, expertise, um, but but I sort of support Council Nelson's view that it would be before we approve it that we we get a more detailed cost of, of what it's going to look like, and I'm just sort of wondering um, how long it might still take. Um, it would it will it will take some weeks, um, probably. I mean, the reality is it would probably be at the next um, council meeting. I guess um, we would need to, if we were going to do that, we would need to um, do it properly uh, and uh, run through the scenarios in terms of fit outs, especially with the container and uh, the, the library building. Um, and we would need to talk a bit more extensively with the likes of you, Cole, to understand, like, we know what their base price is. But there's always hidden hooks and some of that stuff when you actually go, oh, well, but we don't want a house, we, so we want to actually have some walls and those things start shifting. So yeah, it's, it's sort of, yeah. I can yeah. assume, um, not having a deal. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Peter. I have that concern about you wanting to use the library building. Um, and um, because it, it seems to me like it's not wouldn't be being used at the moment. You have had to be the archives were. Um, why are they? Why is the, the library um, saying that um, 
that seemed to me as if they were, there's a little bit of resistance there that they, because they were using it. Um, so it's the, not being used by the library. Well, it would make sense that you someone use it. So there is so there is use now for, for, for the library. Um, that, but the the use uh, what we're doing here. Uh, at, so this is us as the CFNA trying to deliver this project is looking at at use versus what we can potentially do to deliver this project, which has been going on for a long time. Yes. Um, if we had our, uh, if, if we had our, if we could have anything we want, we would leave the the building where it is by the library, and we would build a a, a, a new building down at the skate park. Um, but that will cost us uh, in excess of six hundred thousand dollars before we even started. It would be my understanding. The the budget for the previous building was five hundred and sixty thousand. We got to I think it was close with Podula, or pretty close. Um, uh, that is not a realistic figure in today's building market. So what we're trying to do is use the resources that we've got the most effectively um, for our community. There is a there is a trade off, uh, and that's part of the reason we're coming to council to say uh, this is our recommendation. But at the end of the day, we do that knowing that every decision we make has an has an impact and influence. We believe that um, in the library in the short term. We can uh, absorb most of that usage in other ways. It's not our ultimate preference, but in terms of a recommendation um, that feels like the, the right recommendation to make to this council, um, but it is up to this council to make that choice. Thank you, Chancellor Google. This is the puzzle of your use of the 600K figure. Um, my daughter on the part and just moved into their new house a few months back and uh, you know, that, I don't see how, and that was just under 600 cards. There's some gap between what I've got, this picture of a you know, little shelter uh, of the skate park and you're quoting a, a, a three-bedroom house. Uh, much closer to a three bedroom house than a little shelter council. Like we're not putting a shack up for our youth here. Thank you. Okay, we now move to the now. Let's see if there's any good questions. So, to Sally, you're willing to move the recommendation? I, yes, indeed. Do we have a second? Why are you? Any further discussion? Um, yes, can I just can't support this without the detail behind it. I think it's not financially pregnant. Uh, from my own point of view, I, I strongly support it. Uh, I think there's two things that make me support it. Very much like Stella, I believe that we've been briefing, this has been a long time coming, and also that this is a, when I read this, I thought that it's just absolutely marvellous that we've actually come up with a, with our own building, uh, that, that it's an option which is relative, which is very cost effective. Uh, and also when I hear from Corin that we've got people in town that are Happy to uh, do the refurbishing and that for us. I think it's just it's an over right. So uh, yeah, I'm supporting it. Councillor Rand, I'm just wondering if we could amend that motion that we support current motion subject to budget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, depends on Councillor Boat. No, Councillor Boat. Yeah. Yep, I can see that it's been a possibility. However, based on utilising option one, which is the prefab building, not going off and getting three other budgets and other claims, a budget on the current building that we're proposing to vote. But have we been given uh, almost iron plan guarantee? Pretty much. Well, it's the line, it's you know. I'm just saying working to our proposed budget, yeah, and then whatever the figure was. Yep, working to our proposed budget. So the so the the project has a budget yep. right now, and so we've 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 sustained a loss, but we've got the remainder that's sitting in the project. That is the project budget, uh, and like of any project that council does, if at any point uh, there was a signal that that budget was not. Uh, going to work, we would come back to council for approval to change that budget uh, and align with that. And that would be council's decision as to whether that was something we wanted to go. So 
from my point of view, I don't see risk to council uh, in that space because we are still working to that budget and we would come back here if there was any conversation about that project budget changing. Yep. Yeah, and for me, I'm, um, I fully support purpose behind it. I really want to see it go. But I'm, but I'm reluctant to approve it without at least a, a bit of a design, knowing what the remaining budget is that we are willing to spend on. And now I'm, I'm not clear what that is. Well, apologies, I should have stood when I talked to them before. Um, so, so the remaining budget is three hundred thousand dollars. That's the job. We're coming back to that. Would the group be happy if the recommendation was put forward with an amendment? Sorry, I'm just like approves the repurposing of the large prefab from the library of Learning Centre for Developers and Youth Hub at the Skateboard working to the current budget. Approves the repurposing of the large prefab from the Library Learning Centre to be developed as the Youth Hub at the Skate Park working to the current budget. Do we already have a budget for the project? We've, viewed, we've uh, turned to custard with the original quadula, and with that means we will be working with the budget that's remaining for this project. It be subject to an appropriate design, I guess it sort of meets the purpose of the project. Well, that's so that, yeah, that's I've got a verbal one, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's already in the original. To be clear, too, and I mean, so as part of the conversations that we've um, had to date, um, so one of the um, people at the meeting was a local um, architectural firm, uh, and they have um, uh, generously uh, agreed to provide high level design to um, do the internal stuff as a part of that. So that's part of exactly what, what we're doing. It was great to get that undertaking in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. And, no, and no cost, sorry, yeah, yeah. so that they're, they're, they're giving that as an initial piece, uh, and then uh, we'll have a conversation with them as things if we need to get into more detail. I mean, we don't expect any of those uh companies to do everything for free, it's about actually having a conversation with those interested people in the community who want to help us make this thing happen, but at the same point, um, that's that business as well. Okay. So was that in the report? So I must have missed it about that local architecture firm. Um, I didn't put that detail in the report, but I put in the, the piece about that that we've met with the combination of architects and tradespeople, uh, and that's that's all in that conversation. So, so can we have the recommendation read out? The recommendation is that the council approves the repurposing of the large repo from the libraries and extended to be developed. Excuse me, as the youth hub at the skate park, working to the current budget. And also notes that officers continue to work with the East Council and notes officers are in the process of engaging with the community to seek support in delivering this project. So if it goes past that budget, it comes back to you. Yes. So we've got, are you happy with that, Stella? Yes, I am. happy to take that. that. Okay, I'm going to put that motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Um, Against. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was good. It's been a very good discussion. It's a really good question. Uh, we now move over to we now move to the page 163, the chief executive's report. Yeah, do you want to co-phone? Uh, you're taking the report that says there's a lot going on. Um, and I don't propose to go through all of this. Uh, you didn't need to know I know some uh, to get off. I uh, just wanted to highlight a few key points within the report, and then obviously happy to take questions and respond to any issues that you might want to raise. Um, so we do have an infometrics update in the report, which I uh, think is useful to bring to your attention uh, for our long-term planning as we're going through our discussions at the moment around service levels and uh, for the um, purposes of the financial around the policy review. So it's good to keep on top of what's going on out in um, in our land, out in the wider upper. Uh, we've also participated in a regional council submission to the Climate Change Commission um, on their second emissions budget. That's included, the submission in there is included within the report itself as an appendix. And effectively, the focus of that was around 
um, the central government uh, advocating the climate change commission advocating more support from central government to local government and communities to do the grassroots work, which is um, which is really important to bring down those emissions and, and particularly focus around our transport in, in our rural areas and the investment in uh, green energy. We've also assessed and decided that there is no evidence based for a freedom camping bylaw in the Masterton district. You'll be aware that Carterton are currently um, uh, consulting on freedom camping bylaw, and we are aware that South One and Upper uh, are also uh, working towards one. We've had an opportunity to uh, get some efficiencies for working with uh, South One and Upper on that bylaw, but we needed to assess whether there is a need, um, and we have determined that there is no need. Uh, the issues that we have in uh, Masterton are more of um, a case of homelessness um, and people staying in their cars. Uh, a huge amount of that, but that's, that's the evidence that we have. Um, and so a freedom camping bylaw can't deal with that issue specifically uh, within the legislation. Our Audit New Zealand have completed their interim audit work for the annual report, but they will be back again in another few months. Um, it's the first hurdle that uh, we've jumped uh, this year. We've also had an audit from the audits of our playgrounds that's just been completed. And um, we'll call back to you on that, uh, on the assessment of that equipment in our playgrounds. We'll be pleased to know that we've had our second session of our Women Only Swim project, and we've managed to secure Rotary South funding and to continue that for a full year um, for swimming within the um, school holidays. You'll know our grant funding has closed, uh, so we'll be going through the process of accepting those applications. I also wanted to bring your attention to the Water Services Bill, which has been just reported back by the Select Committee. There have been some amendments to, um, to the proposed bill. Uh, the intention is that that bill uh, goes through all of the stages of the House before uh, the uh, Parliament rises, uh, before the election. One of the changes within that is a mechanism for having an ordering council, which is a secondary piece of legislation um, that's effectively comes through the government rather than parliament. And what that would do is set out the go live dates for all of the water services entities. So that has to come in, um, that ordering council by the latest in February. So what that means is we will know the latest in February when our region, the Wellington region, um, has a water services entity that goes live and basically all of our assets um, and our functions trans over, transfer over from council to that water services entity. Um, with leave of the mayor, um, I have been here um, to do just a quick verbal update on um, on our recovery activities. That's yeah. okay. It's not actually what the report itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a quick verbal update. We will be providing a. Awesome paper to council around recovery activities. I suppose the key focus for us at the moment in recovery space is the current categorisation of land or uh, areas that have been impacted by a recent cyclone. Um, we've indicated there's a region that we're, we're focusing on. Um, we're going to be closely with the environmental regional council who have formed a an engineering team to do the categorisation of land. Um, we've met with Hawke's Bay Regional Council to get the learnings from their process. Um, we're communicating with the, the, um, the areas of the community, community that are impacted around updating them around the process. We hope to get some further comments out to the community around this process. But we're, we're making good progress. Um, but there's, you know, there's a significant amount of work to do in this space, and it's complex, and uh, we've got to work through it systematically. Uh, the, the, the other key area in the recovery space at the moment, which I'll report in more detail, is the more broader uh, support that we're providing community, um, which um, we're currently in the in, you know, the key focus is, is securing funding for central government, um, which seems to be a key part of the functions of the recovery office. And once we uh, 
as we hear some additional funding will be working with partnership agencies such as uh, Michigan Private Industries and and um, and the Rural Trust and various other organisations across Wairapa to ensure we have the support services. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Any questions for Karen or Ben? Right, Councillor Gould. Councillor Gould. The uh, the inventory is that just uh, like a subscription? I said we paid then or something a year, and they just annually give us a bit of a update on our economy. Yeah, so we have a um, call to the updates from Infometrics, but Matt's sticking his hand up. Matt's going to respond to you. Yeah, so as part of our Infometrics, so I post a webinar each month updating us on the current economic conditions, trends they see, and also the through big dives. So this was, um, this is my readout from that webinar. So that's attended by um, councils across the country. And that's hosted, uh, Brad Olson leads that, who um, you've seen on TV all the time, and he um, brings someone along with expertise in certain areas. And the uh, policy development and review procedure is that, um, is that, uh, I suppose, I, yeah, I don't know if that I have always had this bad dream that staff don't running around developing policies seriously. And, and does that sort of come back to us uh, and some part of it? If, if staff decide to design a, you know, design a policy, but, Maybe councillors say, oh, we don't need that. Uh, so the policy development review procedure, it basically um, is an internal document that gives clarity on all the range of policies that we that we develop um, and who owns those and the process that they should go through through a policy development. So it's trying to ensure that uh, we've got a really robust procedure in terms of what we do choose to have a policy on. Um, clearly, we need HR policies on particular issues, and that will be a, that will be a matter for uh, our management on what, what those policies we need. Any external facing policies, we will certainly come to council um, as to um, what we were going to do uh, in that space. And you'll know that we've got planned for the next audit and risk meeting um, an update on where we are with our policies as well. So that's an opportunity to have a look at our programme and uh, give your feedback on what policies you, you may feel less inclined towards and some which are more inclined towards. Thank you. Any other Councillor Nelson and Councillor Johnson? Just spot there. Sorry, Councillor Tutor. Councillor Tutor, first please, then Councillor uh, Nelson and then Councillor Johnson. So, no, my fault. Um, metrics, um, is that can lead to members go to that as well? Find oh, out. Yeah. I'm interested in them. Okay. Um, my other question was, women only score my that's in the gym. Is that an um, region of why we are or is it master? Would you see that? I'm 99% sure it's just mastered in, um, but I can check the information. So just I'm 99% sure that it's just for mastered in residents, but I can come back to you um, with confirmation later. So it's just. Right, three Master, 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 Okay, we have Councillor Nelson. It's just for that. Um, what the metrics, just thinking back to just before pandemic, they gave us a whole lot of forecasts that were terribly wrong, but no one I guess knew what was going to happen. Did they ever do an analysis of their forecasting? <laughs> yeah, so at, at these webinars, they kick off with um, where things stand in terms of GDP and inflation, etc. And those graphs will also track what their predictions were. Oh, so they'll track their predictions versus what what actually turned out, and also other predictions. So they they fully um, they they cop the fact that they missed those predictions, and they um, talk about that and how they refine their processes. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. 
Yeah, we've received page 174. I'd like to thank council staff for who you're doing with the one that I've passed. And I just have two questions regarding that. If you could let me know what the date is for the Pacific Roadshow, because it's mentioned, but there's no date on there. And the second thing was if you could give us an update on the welcoming week um, plans and preparation. Kelsey, I might ask you to. Yeah, so we can, I think they're still deciding the date for that, the roadshow, so we can let you know um, what they come back with there. Um, and then in regards to um, our cultural festival, so um, it's well in motion. We're just waiting for um, some funding applications um, to come back. At the moment, we've got um, a wee bit of funding there to support um, some of the things we want to do over the course of the 10-day period. Um, and we're just waiting on... Um, one other application to come back to see whether or not we can deliver the full um, shebang on, on that Saturday. Um, but if, if we do get the funding to support that, we've got um, a series of community activities being delivered um, over the course of the week, and then we're going to finish on Saturday the 9th of September um, with an event. Um, hopefully, if um, the weather's good, it'll be out um, in the street in the middle of town somewhere. Um, we've got yeah, stages, um, speakers, music, cultural performances, food, dance. Um, yeah, so we'll hopefully know kind of this time next week what that might look like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Any further questions? Councillor Good one. Uh, just a comment. I don't know. It's just a comment on page 171 about these all of those at the skate park and the damage uh, they sustain. Is it, I suppose, I could uh, say, is it a really hard environment there? Um, down here? I'd hate to be precious and suspect it, but I'm just reading the report. But, and which is why I wondered about the portal buildings sustainability. Um, I, I, so, I, I can actually ask that to some degree that over the years that I've been at council, we've put portal out in a number of places on Marks of them, and just about every time they've been written. Okay. So I don't think I don't think the placing okay. comes right. into it. I think it's a uh, it's a social problem. And then just below that, it says our parks gone through the rec services, meant the KPIs, and uh, got a year's extension to the contract. What's the Are, are we uh, going? They must be due for a 17A or re tendering of that contract, if my memory serves me right. So I think we're about uh, two years, two years out. So, and yes, you are right. We are uh, due for a 17A in the next year or so. So we can run a 17A uh, at the end of the contract expiring because it gives us an indication of whether we will be staying in the contracting space or moving to uh, an internal process. But yeah, we're, we're getting very close to that and I'm already talking to the team about uh, the fact that we're going to need to do that. Uh, and uh, similar in the uh, the um, brick centre space as well. Yeah. Any other question? Sorry, I should. Anything else? Sure. And um, just carry in response to your comment about playgrounds audits. It's just the same process that we went through a few years ago that led to the controversy around the track. This is like, is it something we do over a certain time frame, maybe three years? Um, so we typically do it every five years. Yeah. Um, so yes, it is, it is the same process in terms of the um, the, the look across the parks and, and all the information. Uh, then uh, what we do with that uh, and how we do it is, is, is a thing that we do at any given year. Right? So we're, we're cognizant of the conversation that happened around the contractor and the bulldozer and as a way that that happens. So um, uh, as we look at what comes back, we just want to ask them, uh, we will have things to engage and then we'll have what the students will be able conversations we need to have. So um, I wouldn't expect the audit to for us to end up in a situation like we did up around the track room and web browser, but it will give us a really good indication of exactly where those playgrounds are at. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
where um, Marissa um, and then we can have some pragmatic decisions, especially through the LGBT. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Just um, checking some of them, shit, sorry. Um, does the uh, Infometrics uh, program uh, talk about um, productivity? Just like something to challenge the commission. I'll have to do something that does um, talk about productivity in the region and um, incomes and first to get product regionally as well. So we do get a um, focus on that. Um, and then it gets broken down to um, sub regional areas. So that breaks down last bill to a prediction of different pockets. Um, the second question um, is testing some assumptions about the um, emergency response um, in Hawke's Bay. Um, and um, I want you to know uh, that the measure of extent of the flooding will be um, the reported back on. As part of the recovery action plan, it's to look at um, a, um, a more detailed um, situational analysis. Um, we haven't got that at the moment, as councillor, and that's sort of one of the work streams. Um, we haven't had the resource to be able to really accurately report that um, to the detail that we would like. Any further questions? No further questions. Start with the ball move. Uh, the chief secretary report. Somebody take the no. 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 We now move to the later item, which is the um, report for the petition called for citizens in the shared referendum. Now, it is a bit there, and you've all got it. Now, I don't know whether you've had a chance to read it or even want to read it, or if you're willing just to have me sign it. We have five minutes just to start it. You just have five minutes. If yeah. you'd like, if you want five minutes, yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll do five minutes. Here is uh, what I'm asking you is, is whether we make this petition available at appropriate council facility for our, our rate payers to, uh, to sign if they want to. Uh, I'll be prepared to move that we do that. To move Councillor Bay and get the Councillor Hove. Any discussion? All in favour? So aye. Aye. Again, thank you. Right, we go to the Councillor's reports and Councillor Lennox is going to give us a couple of minutes. I'd like to stand. I Thank you. So I won't give you all my updates. We'll be here all night, but I'll just give you a couple. So obviously, I was fortunate enough to um, represent our council at the local government New Zealand conference uh, just last week with um, Karen here, which was an excellent opportunity to a, learn a lot for myself personally, but get a really clear idea as to where the um, country is heading in that direction. So um, just a couple of things. Uh, the key takeaways was there's a really large focus amongst the, the group of 750, by the way, there were 750 at the conference, so a really good spread of of um, people, climate change, infrastructure, EU partnerships and reforms, the future for local government report, 17 recommendations, can be a lot of discussion around that coming up, so be prepared. Um, LGNZ actually launched their Choose Localism um, campaign, which I'll talk to you in further detail at the presentation uh, next week, but that's really how we're going to move forward as a community, working alongside our community, etc. Um, and the common theme really from all the speakers and workshops and toys that I attended was engagement, 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 and that you need to get your community around this table and get them part of the action, because that's really exciting. And there was a lot of youth representatives, a lot of younger, younger than many people on councils now, so there's sort of the feeling of there's not a huge amount of room around the table anymore for bigots or um, sort of uh, racism and I'll openly speak to that and also not myself but just yeah there's no room for this old school status quo anymore that's one of the biggest um biggest takeaways i've probably got so there was there was conference which was great thank you very much great payers for allowing me to attend um the two updates i have just quickly tia fina 
uh, community hub down here on our east side. They were absolutely thrilled with the grant that they um, that they managed to secure for the e-bike, which is going to be stored and um, secured at the at the house. And local residents are going to use it to do groceries um, and just utilise it, I suppose, in any shape or form that they need. A lot of people living on that side of town don't have vehicles or bicycles to use. So that's great. And uh, they've been given some further uh, funding through the community organisation grant scheme, which is great. And really just the work that comes out of the house is phenomenal from the volunteers to Donna who works there. And I think we might be off the hook. Who's on oh, no, one more international relations committee? So Tim and myself are the reps for the international relations crew. So that's around the sister cities that we have for um sisterly relationships. Sorry, with Japan, China, and um, Australia. So Armadale in Australia, Chang Chong in China, and Hatsuri Kai Chi in Japan. So we have Tim and I attended a couple of weeks ago the Why Word uh, sort of um, event where a book was launched around encountering China and we spoke, didn't we, Tim, in regards to that about our sister city relationship, which was great. A lot of people, A, didn't know really about it. And I guess post COVID, it sort of went into the back burner a wee bit, but we're going to get it back up and running. And we have coming up, we've got uh, visitors from China coming over to meet with the mayor and, and speak with Tim and I in October. And also we had a meeting online with the uh, Hatsuka Chi mayor from Japan in October as well. So watch the space for more. That's all. Thank you very much, Councillor Lennox. And uh, I have heard from uh, outside that both you and Tim did a great job on that Chinese uh, event. So thank you very much for that. It's good. Okay, we come to to just you know, I'm going to just give a very quick verbal report uh, in terms of the media report. The, what I want to really talk about is the ceremony on Monday when playing Aura came back to Marston with the opening of their Iron Street North Development. Uh, it's been over 20 years, as most of you would know, that playing Aura provided social housing in that district. And I just want to uh, make a special mention here. Um, that, that nobody would have been more thrilled with those turn of events than, than my predecessor, Lynn Patterson, and I think it's only fair that we mention that at Council. And her three terms as Mayor Lynn was a huge advocate uh, for playing or to, to again become involved here. And uh, her persistence in this regard made her pretty, with three legendary in local government circles. I, I know since I've become Mayor that a couple of the other Mayors have said to me what they could remember Lynn about was just belting all about social housing and crying or playing or coming back. So uh, to Lynn, if you're listening or hearing or whatever, thank you for that you've done. And also for Kieran, I've got to say Kieran McInerney, uh, who's another one who was never shy to make his opinions uh, known on that matter as well. So I think that we we, we owe them a real deal. Um, it was pleasing for me to be able to give a special plug at that uh, function to the council's building team and their pre-lodgement process, uh, which gave the project a flying start and helped make the development move really swiftly, uh, the Jenny and Holmes representative actually went out of his way to ask me to express the thanks to uh, to us or to the council, to our building team for what he called the fantastic support uh, that we gave them during this project. And that, that pre-lodgement process uh, sounds like it's going to be, yeah, really help things along. Uh, later that morning, Karen and I met with the Kwayan Aurora rep, uh, Vicky McLaren, to discuss the future needs for Master and District in social housing. And uh, I think we would both say, uh, Karen, that Vicky was very positive regarding uh, her commitment and Kyanga Aura's commitment to both our district and the wider Warwick region. Uh, it's, it's another thing that was pleasing for me to do with uh, with Bex, Deputy Mayor Bex, to represent the council at a, at a barbecue function at which the Wellington Free Ambulance uh, promoted the site on the corner of Russell and Queen Streets in which they're going to build their new premises. Uh, there's still about 1.5 million, I think, short of raising the necessary funds for this building, which is costing over 7 million in all. But they seem pretty confident that they'll overcome that hurdle before the end of the year. So that's going to be great to get it here. And the other thing that Bex and I also attended uh, just the other day was the 100th birthday celebration for the Public Trust Building, um, which has to be one of the most iconic buildings, of course, in Masterton. Uh, it was appropriate that this celebration coincided with the 150th birthday of the public trust itself. Uh, and there was there was one thing, a particular theme in all the speeches there, 
and that was how lucky we are to have buildings of the stature of the public trust, their own municipal buildings, and the wire at the time, uh, one block, one special block that is, but people are mastering them, they'll look that gives it a town hall period. And uh, believe me, Tim, the town hall was mentioned in every speech that was made about how great it's going to be to have a backpack. Uh, so thank you, that's where we're on going to put that there. And so we now move into uh, public excluded. Somebody prepared to move. We moved to public excluded. Move David, second fix. All in favour? Thank you. Right, let's get into public excluded. We have the minutes. Oh, are you really on? Oh, stop recording. Oh, stop recording. You said two minutes. Have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. Yeah. I'm, I'm 